Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody. There are a lot of things going on with Blizzard that I never thought would actually happen, ever see, and or hear. Um, but, you know, after that recent delay that they've decided to make with Shadowlands coming out at a later date here in 2020, some good things are starting to come along with it. Some of the things that in my delay video I was actually not anticipating and not expecting to have happen are beginning to have happen in this recent update and post. Uh, Kaivax, the community manager here, speaks about the Maw, the endgame zone of the Shadowlands, conduits, probably the most important part of this, and then balancing and tuning all of these things that I was extremely worried about, probably most worried about with Shadowlands in particular, because there are actually so many good things. Like I'm a big fan of the unpruning, the return of all of these unique abilities and class flavors. I'm actually very excited to see the Covenant abilities and how they play out in all of their given content and respective strategies. I'm very excited about all of these things. And then the things that I was worried about was balancing and tuning, PvE trinkets in PvP, uh, and conduits, and the seven-day lockout. These were like my giant concerns. Well, this post really addresses all of that. So with the Maw here being the endgame zone of Shadowlands, um, they're intending to really look more deeply into it to make it more engaging than just kind of the standard world zone that you're used to expecting because right now it is it just kind of feels like the same old same old zone doesn't really have any sort of unique vibe to it this is going to be a place that you're going to be traveling to basically weekly uh, to collect stygia from the rewards that which will allow you to catch up certain conduits um, and level up your conduit bank in general for more experimentation which now i can excitedly say you'll be able to experiment with uh, because that was really a big problem with it. So hopefully the Maw ends up being a really cool zone. I'm interested to see how it plays out with war mode. Um, I'm If it ends up being like Timeless Isle, Timeless Isle was probably my most favorite world endgame zone from Missa Pandaria. So if the Maw is like a high intensity, brutal, timeless isle i think that it could be a lot of fun although at the moment if you've watched my stream i probably just get pissed off because um doing the beta test and having your characters wiped and having to go through the same intro quest line of the mall on every character like 500 times is just like i don't want to do this anymore but in terms of planning for the end game and like having something to do when my teammates aren't around and then traveling to the maw with war mode on and because you can't mount in the maw it's like super brutal high intensity you got that limited clock timer before you get kicked out by the jailer um, it could actually be really cool and awesome and maybe actually restore my interest in end game world content because i honestly haven't had that much of an interest in it so hopefully now with the extra time that they've given themselves this means that they'll be able to improve the mod dramatically and it's definitely something that they're looking to do now moving further into the post here we've got the conduit section and i'll have a link to this down below if you really want to dive deeply into this but uh, they're definitely listening here, um, especially to the problems with the system early on. While you're acquiring soul binds and conduits, you're only going to have one or two of them. And if they're locked for a seven week period or for a one week period, seven day period, uh, you wouldn't be able to ever switch them, try out different ones, play different specs. You would never you would only be stuck to one one spec uh, on your class with these conduits. In my way, the conduits work a lot like the Azerite traits do, except that you're putting them into a talent tree rather than taking up a gear slot and having to do that. So their solution here in an upcoming build, we will be replacing the weekly cooldown on changing conduits with a more flexible system. When first unlocked, the Forge of Bonds will be charged with 10 conduit energy and placing a conduit into a socket will consume a single charge. Conduit energy recharges at the rate of one per day up to a cap of 10 and adding a new conduit to your collection immediately restores one conduit energy as well. So you may want to hold on to conduits for your off specs in your bag. Um, if you're going to put an upgrade for a conduit in and you're already at 10 energy, I would imagine you can't go past 10. So you may want to hold on to conduits in your inventory. That's kind of a downside to this. Um, idea where you're going to just have maybe conduit sit in your bags to make sure you can get that one energy to switch it out. 
but that that like minor inconvenience to be able to actually try different conduits, different builds, different ideas, and different content of the game. To me, the big deal with covenants is the covenant spell itself, and the covenant needs to be a distinct decision. But trying to lock your conduits in as well was just creating this infinite possibility where you would just have super anxiety of, I don't know what build to go after, and I'm locked into it. So this should alleviate a lot of that for that slight minor inconvenience of you probably just want to hold some conduits in your bag um, and use them to unlock your 10 conduit energy if you haven't used them but this should allow you to more freely change your specs um, and then if you haven't uh, been tuning into shadowlands content the way the legendaries work also is you'll travel to torgast you'll complete the eight wings which takes maybe a half an hour to an hour depending on if you're horrible at it <laughs> uh, and then you're going to get 100 stygia and you can spend that on a legend uh, stygia is it stygia might not be stygia uh, don't hold me on the, uh, it's a type of currency from Torghast. You get a hundred, hundred of it and you can buy a legendary. So the legendary would come at a base item level and then you will upgrade it with a hundred every week, which means you will be dedicating yourself somewhat to a legendary if you want it to improve. But I, to my understanding, the only stats in the legendary that increase are the stats on it, which is pretty minor. Um, if the effect itself on the legendary levels up, then it would be massive, but I feel like it doesn't. So if you want to multi-spec, it means that you would buy a legendary for one spec and then the following week buy a legendary for the next spec. But you'll be one week behind on upgrading the first one, which might be, I don't even know what the math would be. Let's say maybe five of each stat, five haste and five mastery behind. Um, if you wanted to maintain more than that, you're going to increasingly fall behind. And at the moment, there is no catch up system for the legendaries. I do hope that they look to address that in the future, because, again, that is going to be a limiting factor, although it is a lot less than if they physically prevented you from putting in a different legendary on every week like they were going to with the conduits. So it's looking to be a lot better. I guess I should say that there is a caveat that later on in, uh, into the process of upgrading your conduits here, the goal with the change is to ensure, especially when players are acquiring new conduits and only have access to a small number of soulbind conduit slots, all players feel free to try out new upgrades. Again, that's great. After the initial collection period for a given character, seven swaps per week should allow more adaptation to suit specific roles or activities while still requiring thoughtful decisions about how to customize each soulbind for your playstyle preferences. So seven swaps would mean seven individual conduits. Now, what I've noticed as a trend for a few specializations, although not all of them, is that quite a few conduits will overlap, such as endurance conduits. You may have the same endurance conduit for all three specs, which or four specs if you're a druid, and you don't really need to worry about changing that one, so that won't take a swap. It's usually roughly only one conduit per soul bind on average that I'm noticing that you'll have to change which means you'll have be able to change that one seven times. So you'd have seven respecs in a week, which is still better than none, which the old system literally would have been none. You would have never been able to change your conduits from the main conduit build that you went. So this is a massive improvement. This is definitely better than nothing. Still going to come with some janky gameplay with, like I said, where you can just sit on a conduit in your inventory um, unless it's counted immediately when it goes into your bag um, or when you learn it at the conduit bank. It's going to kind of be determined. But this should allow you to respec and try other specs and try other builds. Or if you want to play like raiding Boomkin and then PvP Boomkin and one of these conduits needs to change, you'll be able to make that change. So this was probably my number one uh, on the list for, for Shadowlands. Maybe not. Maybe number two. Maybe this next one. This next one's probably number one. Uh, class and Covenant Balance. Tuning has been underway over the past couple of weeks, but work, much work remains. Our initial tuning efforts have focused on Covenant class abilities that were outliers on either end of the spectrum, which basically meant if your Covenant ability was the best, it got nerfed into being the worst, and now there's a new best, uh, including some substantial redesigns where necessary. The rogue ones in particular I'm looking at, um, seems like those ones are kind of the last to get looked at, at least for the Venthyr one actually being completely changed. Uh, the coming weeks, we'll see continued iteration on those abilities, as well as the soul binds that come complement them. Balance in this area means pursuing a mix of offsetting strengths and weaknesses rather than identical capabilities. So this is good. And now, now they can actually do this in my mind, making a covenant ability and the conduits feel like they're powerful in one aspect of the game compared to another. Now I feel they can more freely do that because you can switch your conduits around. So if you're doing Mythic Plus Dungeons where it's better to have area of effect conduits generally for trash, 
Um, but then you want to switch to PvP, where it's probably better to have single target oriented conduits as you're hitting less targets on average. Uh, you'll be able to change it and you'll be able to get the strengths of both, which is really nice. Um, and our goal in this process is that every class and covenant combination should have something to commend it. So this is still a really big goal with the delay. Um, not to sound like doom and gloom. I feel like ultimately there's probably still going to be a few outliers with covenants that end up just not working out in certain content, uh, of the game. Uh, Shaman is one that's standing out to me where I don't know how much balance and tuning they would need to do to make Kyrian Shaman, um, with a Vesper Totem good in PVP comparatively to mythic plus where it's amazing but then something like chain harvest which is fantastic in pvp but not as good as the vesper totem even if you tune them down i'm a bit curious to see uh what they do there there are some other underliers uh within the conduit trees themselves that i think a lot of people haven't got to fully test um things like venthyr's benefit to being interrupted 25 percent less as a passive this is just completely outside of anything to do with the extra conduits you learn outside of the covenant ability is a really big benefit when it comes to pvp so even if your covenant spell ends up being like luster in pvp it still might be a good option to be running nadja for 25 percent interrupt reduction or as kyrian when you're dipped below a certain amount of, amount of health i believe it's like 35 percent health you unleash an aoe stun around you which is on its own diminishing return for three seconds which in pvp is a fantastic um i could see a mythic plus as tanks as well if you get hit really hard by a trash pull and then just stunning everything off of dr uh, being like a really good strategy. So there are a lot of things to take into consideration on top of just the covenant spells and the conduits themselves that could even out the balance potentially so that you can go after a specific build that you want or a specific cosmetic even and still feel functional in the rest of the game. But this has easily been the number one update for me. I, I feel like I was a bit skeptical when they said they're going to delay. Are they really going to address the things that I have the biggest problems with and I think are going to be the biggest problems for the general player base of the game? This this post here confirms it. Like it wasn't just a a bluff or like a PR move or something. Like this is like, yep, they're going to do it. Um, I'm very happy that conduits are going to change. I'm very happy that balance and tuning continues. Still really hoping that they look at PVE trinkets. That's the biggest standout for PVP at the moment. Um, PVE trinkets that just prevent you from dying. Like you don't do anything. You just, if you die, you get to live every two minutes or you press it and instantly kills a target. Um, the, the trinkets are just not adding to the gameplay. Uh, with the set bonus that they added, it was great for PvP trinkets. I think it was a good idea. Could also help them tune PvP if there's ever tuning issues by increasing that bonus over time. But the bonus is not competing with the strength. Hopefully it is just so obvious that these trinkets are out of control in PvP that they'll either disable them, nerf them by 99% or something against players. Um, because right now that's like a really big issue um, with PvP is this kind of clash of what pve gear should work what shouldn't um, but so far this is an excellent update i'm very excited to see what they do i'm going to continue my testing if you'd like to follow along on twitch.tv slash i'm streaming there every morning i'm testing out as many specializations as i can and then of course i'm making content here on youtube to try and keep you in the loop as far as class changes updates reviews giving you deep dives my ideas my opinions to try and set you up for success moving into shadowlands my main priority of course being something that you pick being fun and engaging for a long period of time so that when you're investing into your character and unlocking all of this, you don't ultimately get bored at the end of your road. So that is the main goal of the channel. If that appeals to you, please subscribe to the channel uh, to see more of that content. I'll have links to videos like my tier lists or my recommended classes up above here in a moment. And other than that, thank you very much for watching and we will see you in the next one.